Uh, can, can I just lock myself in this room? I don't... That, um, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here, I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. Well, that was a really quick one. Oh, what the hell? This is different. Dude. This room is different. What? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hey, why was that different? Where's the office? Is that really okay? We just skipped the office. Okay, that's freaking me out. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> How to resolve a dispute. Let it ball up inside you. Take it up passive aggressively. Resent coworkers for not supporting you. That is exactly. Oh! Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on all the text. <laughs> oh, hey, why, why was it like that? The rooms were all gone. Everything else seems. Oh, sh whoa. Uh. Um. Okay. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. What if I don't? No? There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. As long as you're giving me a new dialogue, man. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. You. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. What's F.A.? Are you... are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. You know why. It's because I'm trying to make you talk. You know exactly why. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. As long as you're talking, man. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? Oh the God. broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. XD, you didn't say the XD. <laughs> Dude, this is so meta. I'm... Trippin. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. Hey! He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to uh -oh. ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. 
Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby, the person at this computer is dead. <laughs> no one's he home. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Good thing nobody's home! Aside from me. I don't know why I keep looking at the light like I think it's the narrator, but I assume he's up there if he exists. Are you just gonna not... No? If I wait long enough. If I wait long enough. Just one more second. Okay, while we're waiting, maybe we can look at what's in here. There's a whole bunch of tools. I guess an office building would need that. But that cargo place, though, it seemed kind of out of place. Is usually an office building like this kind, with cubicles and all, wouldn't have gigantic cargo lifts. But okay, it seems like nothing's happening. So. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You too. <laughs> I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish, fungus. Look, you can hammer out the details. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Is he really done with me this time? Well, that was random. Was this broom closet here before? Because I don't remember it but then again the hallway before us was different too so i don't know maybe things change coming to a staircase stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office what if i go down Ooh. you know i forgot where i heard this but um, I think I was watching a Silent Hill related video and they were saying that in Silent Hill. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <gasps> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently oh. float above the ground. I'm floating. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. 
Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Oh, my God. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What the hell? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. Oh my God. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. That's actually... <laughs> what exactly what I was trying to get to before I was interrupted. I was just gonna say that in... I read a... I saw a video that mentioned how in, in the Silent Hill games, they used going downstairs as a symbolism for the descension into madness, and spookily enough, that was exactly what we just witnessed! Is that gonna close? Can I close this? Yeah, I gotta be a tidy person. Is it raining? Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely, I was mistaken. I can't open it anymore. Hey, is it raining? Do you hear that? I'm pretty sure I didn't hear this before. Dude, I'm like tripping out. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can- whoa. I can like- Hey, what was that? Oh, okay. Is it raining? Well, I mean, obviously, yes, it is raining, but... 
okay. In the office, this part just like mysteriously returned. <laughs> that sound of the rain pitter pattering, slowly diminishing as we get deeper into the building. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What, man? Oh, okay, I don't even... Uh, I'm not sure what else we can do. Um, agree and then disagree, was it? Or no, no, disagree first. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime. A work of art, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. So that's the cargo lift. We can go in here. And so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. And this is where we would be. Yeah, this is where we would be if we entered the other door, which is now closed. And that just, that really just puts us right on track. Why is it raining? Why? Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Can we do something? This is here again. Oh no, oh no, no, oh, no, 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 What the heck? I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. It knows exactly what I think. This is insane. Oh my god. It knows about all my previous playthroughs. <laughs> but he got sick of my shit, so let's get out of here, I guess. That is hilarious, though. I wonder if we can end here, but it doesn't seem like it. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Nah. Let's see if there is anything we can do in the boss's office. Or if there's anything we can do about that rain. Hey, this door doesn't close. Never mind. Hmm. Can't go to the washer. Dude, it's really bothering me. Why is it raining? It can't be raining without reason. But then again, earlier, the, the hallways got Stepping truncated. Into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Two, eight, four, five. What if but we don't course, put it in? Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Is there like a secret button switch at the bookcase? So, so far it seems pretty normal aside from the fact that it's now raining Stanley for some reason. Stanley just around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless since he could never possibly know that the combination was two, eight, four, five. Stanley simply began entering random codes into the keypad. Two, eight, four, five. Do we have to? I mean, we could just sit on this nice couch here and wait for our boss to come back, right? Like, forgot. But it turns out that the panel's emergency override. Oh my God! And the door just opened all by itself. And Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. I really wonder if there's anything else we can do, though. No, I want to get out of here. I don't want to be here. Two, eight, four, five. Shoot. 
Messed it up anyway. Hey, can I go somewhere else? Okay, if this is just all gonna be the same anyway, then... I'm gonna cut it here. Okay, so that one was the same. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. It's not raining again. See, if I go close to the... I can't even hear anything anymore. Whoa! What the hell? It's normal? What the... F oh my god. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative wow, tropes. Wow, they have so something planned out for that everything. Here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place wow. to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Hmm. Oh, okay, I can... Yeah, you know what? To be honest, I am getting sick of this gag. Well, I don't know how to say this politely, but you could literally just hit <laughs> escape and restart the game any old time you want. Like, right now. Like now? You could have done it just then. Now would also be an appropriate time to quit. Any of these points and so many, many more, all of them are appropriate. I'm enjoying what seems to be an internal conflict going on where you are literally unable to act on your own desires to restart the Shut game. Shut up! So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. There once was a man named Stanley who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way, but his brain had long ceased to function. Which is why he is in this parable and lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yes. <laughs> you too will become quite unbearable. What the hell is this? Like if I sit here forever, is it just gonna play me this song forever? Okay, so I think... Well, let's wait till the end of this section, I guess. Okay, yeah, I think it just loops. Screw that. Maybe now we can try saying no? What the heck? Does this game just randomly randomize or something? Randomly randomize. Oh my god, this is freaking me out. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. What the hell is this? Like, I want to go outside, but I also want to... No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. What the hell? Oh, inside those rooms are okay, though. I guess they just randomize little things so that, I don't know, to keep you interested and keep you thinking and trying to find endings and stuff. Okay, so how did I get on this chair earlier? Okay. How did I walk over? Oh! And if I- if I get the hell over here... Oh god! Oh! At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map and- Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? No! Ah, then in that case we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? 
Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Will it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here oh just to do God. the other option? Clearly this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, <laughs> and now you've come to see what happens in this one. <laughs> so, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. Though if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. No, give me something. Come on, man. I can't select anymore. Oh my god, and this is a wall. We have the windows. <sighs> it's bothering me how it knows exactly everything I'm thinking. <sighs>